Well, hey, good evening, everyone. It's seven o'clock, and welcome to World Harvest Church's midweek service. Obviously, I am off-site. I'm coming to you tonight from my home office. Uh, praise God here on the Cody Place at the Cody Farm. And I tell you what, uh, World Harvest Church, I am missing you. Uh, my family and I, we are missing the church family so, so much. Uh, praise God, but of course, we've got so much to be grateful for. And uh, as I visited and talked with many of you, uh, I, hear, I hear that same thing. Uh, we're getting a, uh, a ch to change of perspective. And we're coming back to the simplicity of our faith. Uh, and we're, uh, we're being brought back to and being reminded about what our priorities ought to be and what really, really matters in life. And so if I'm coming to you tonight and you're healthy, uh, you have provision, you have food on your table, clothes on your back, you're, you're sheltered, you're out of the wind, you've got gas in your car, uh, praise God. We have much to boast about, much to be grateful for. And uh, listen, if you're struggling tonight, uh, if finances have become tight, uh, you know, if uh, you're sick in your body, if you're scared, uh, if you're confused, I tell you what, stay tuned throughout the broadcast because I believe God's going to use me tonight uh, to be a blessing and a source of encouragement for you. You know, I remember, uh, and I never quote this, I always feel like I have to say it uh, because I don't want anyone to feel like I'm boasting or bragging. Uh, you know, in 2010, I was in California to meet with Dr. Dufresne, Pastor Nancy, and the Holy Ghost came upon them and several ministers were ministered to in that moment. I happened to be one of them. And uh, Dr. Frame ministered to me by the Spirit. And as I turned around to go back to my seat, Pastor Nancy, the Holy Ghost came upon her, Pastor Nancy Dufresne, and I have it right here. Uh, I'll just read a portion of this to you. Wasn't planning on doing that. Let me see if I can find it here very quickly. And uh, praise God. So if you're just chiming on, if you're just coming on to our Facebook feed uh, or to YouTube, uh, praise God, this is going to give you a moment to get settled, get your Bible out, uh, amen, get your family there with you, and uh, we're going to have a great uh, few minutes together in the Lord. And uh, you know, we're living in a great day. I tell you what, where would we be uh, if this was going on, uh, you know, and we didn't have this technology uh, that could get us, uh, you know, at least to connect together like this. So anyway, if you're just chiming on, we want to welcome you to our broadcast if you're uh, a visitor to uh, World Harvest Church of Paducah. Uh, of course, people get to see this from, here it is, from all around the world. Uh, we want to welcome all of the friends uh, and the ministry partners of Chris Cody Ministries and uh, welcome you to our midweek service here. So we've got some announcements for you. Uh, I'm just exhorting you right now as people are coming on. Uh, if you just uh, are just clicking on, praise God, trust everything with the video is working great. Uh, praise God. And then if you're watching YouTube, whatever, we want you to have your Bible, something to write with, something to make notes with. So I've got some announcements. We're going to exhort you. We're going to receive an offering. And then I've got some things I'm going to share from my heart uh, with you from uh, the Word and pray with you and for you uh, tonight. But uh, anyway, as we approach this moment, I was rehearsing uh, something that uh, the Spirit of God ministered to me. This was June 17th. Uh, out in California in 2010, so just shy of 10 years ago. And this is what the Holy Ghost said to me through her. A mantle of wisdom is coming upon you. It's been there uh, in a measure, but it's going to increase, and it gives you a voice. It's going to give you a voice. As you are faithful, that voice will develop and grow. There's going to be answers. Answers not just for congregation, but there again, outside people. That could be you tonight. Uh, outside people, other ministers. You might be a minister and uh, chiming in and uh, getting fed and getting a word of encouragement. The Holy Ghost may uh, use me to bring wisdom or an answer to your life. And then the Spirit of God went on and said, people are going to come. They're just going to sit around you and you're just going to open up your mouth it's going to be the answer of the Spirit for their life. The answer of the Spirit for their life. Because you're a spiritual man, she goes on and talks to me. I, I won't get into uh, that too much. But uh, I always feel like I have to say, you know, before I read this, you know, that I'm not saying this and rehearsing this in your hearing, this word I got from God 10 years ago, for my benefit. This is all about you. This is all about people uh, in our congregation. 
uh, ministry partners, spiritual sons and daughters, ministers uh, that God said were going to come. They're going to just sit around. And that mantle of wisdom, that came, it's not me, it came from God, is going to come upon me. And the answer of the Spirit for your life may just come out of my mouth uh, over the course of this ministry moment we're having together. So again, I don't say that for my own benefit. I say it for the and I rehearse it so that you can know it's available and, and so that you and I could mix our faith together with that. So why don't we do that right now? Bow your head with me in prayer. Father, we come before you and we're so grateful to have this means of communication available to us today. Oh, Father God, it's not ideal. And God, we look forward and pray that the day comes very soon that, Father God, that we can uh, gather together in corporate worship as we have for many years and enjoy the sweet fellowship of the saints, corporate praise and worship, the laying on of the hands, and in the move of the Holy Ghost, and all that you have planned and purpose for the church to experience. We just so thank you for victory over the coronavirus and over every enemy of our liberty and our freedom to worship together and to worship you. Now, Father God, we, we call to mind, we wage a good warfare uh, with this word that came from you about this mantle of wisdom. God, I just make a demand on that mantle of wisdom. May it come upon me in a strong way. Father, let the answer of the Spirit for people's lives come out of my mouth tonight. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for giving me utterance to speak and that, God, that you would give every person under the sound of my voice the anointing and the grace to receive, to hear, to grab hold, to comprehend, to incorporate the engrafted word which is able to save our souls. And so, Father God, we just exalt your word. We exalt all that you're doing in this moment, not just for us, but in our city, uh, in our church, in our nation, and in this world. Hallelujah. And I just thank you, Father God, that a mighty giant that is the body of Christ is standing up on its feet in this hour that we're throwing off everything that's hindered and encumbered us from doing your will, Father, and that, God, we're coming out of this on, on fire and with a new zeal and a new commitment and a reset priority, if need be, in our life to pursue, to pursue you with all of our might and all of our heart, to love you, sir, with all of our heart and soul and might and strength. And God, I just thank you for the anointing that would remove burdens and destroy yokes in people's lives under the sound of my voice right now. I thank you for the healing power of God. Uh, I thank you that God, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Glory to God and that the same spirit that raised our Lord from the dead is quickening our mortal bodies, causing them to live I just so thank you that you're working great and mighty things in each of our lives in this moment, in this season. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are in faith together about it. Praise God. Well, uh, again, I want to welcome those of you who have just now got to click on to get the video going. Praise God. And uh, here I have some announcements, some things I wanted to communicate to you as your pastor. Uh, first of all, don't forget... Uh, God has put it in my heart uh, to do a Good Friday web event. We're going to do a good, we're going to honor and celebrate Good Friday. Of course, we're in the midst of Holy Week for Christians. And of course, Jesus is our Passover. And every year, of course, we do it at our church all the time. But uh, we are remembering uh, with Christians around the world, uh, Good Friday, the day that Jesus uh, submitted himself to scourging, to whipping, to uh, mocking and interrogation of you know, him being innocent and ultimately his death on the cross where he shed his blood for you and me to purchase the wonderful redemption that we have and enjoy today. So anyway, uh, I have invited Reverend Kamal Madala. We're going to get together in a studio that we're working on uh, there at the church campus. And we'll go live uh, right here on uh, our World Harvest Church uh, Facebook platform. Uh, it may be streamed on YouTube. It may be streamed on our website. Not sure about that, but that's probably true. But we know we'll be coming to you live on a Facebook event, and we're doing everything we can to advertise this. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to spend at least an hour. We may go up to three hours. just depends. Uh, praise God. And we're just going to enjoy a flow. We're going to lead discussion back and forth.
We're going to talk about the Word. We're going to talk about what God's doing. And this is how we're going to get you involved. We want to answer questions live on the air. Uh, amen. And so you could submit your questions live during the event in the comment section or through private messages. I'm going to have some people on my staff there uh, that will be taking questions and comments and getting them to us and we'll be responding to you. Uh, but then uh, you could write this down. Uh, you could email us in advance your question or your prayer request. We're going to be praying for people uh, during this live event on Good Friday starting at 7 p.m. And uh, but you could email. We set up, we've set up a special email just for this event. Here it is. It's called talk, T-A-L-K, at whcpaducah.com. And you could email me your prayer request. You could email me your private question if you didn't want it to be aired uh, out there on the platforms for people to see. And we are going to do our best to answer your question. We're going to let iron sharpen iron. We're just going to have a good time in the Word of God together, uh, remembering Good Friday. And uh, so praise God. If you're shut up at home, you're under restrictions, this is going to give you a wonderful thing uh, to take part in on Friday night. And we're excited about that. Some other things that God has put on my heart uh, as this is developed is, uh, you know, Amber and I and the Cody's, we are huge restaurant people. We have gone out to eat in Paducah restaurants for years and years. And, you know, so many of them have been affected, laid off, furloughed because of the lockdown and the forced shutdown in business. And so many are hurting financially. And so I had it on my heart. We're going to receive a love offering that night during the course of the broadcast. At any time during the broadcast, even now, whenever, uh, you could text our new text to give uh, option. And that number is 270-279-1777 and the keyword help. Now, if it's your first time to use text to give you'll have to follow the prompts. And then when you're done with that, you won't ever have to do that again then you'll text the keyword HELP in a dollar amount. Now, none of the money that we raise uh, or that we give during this Good Friday moment, and really it's going to last all the way through the weekend, none of it's going to be used in our church. We already have resources to take care of families in our church. We are going to do everything we can, I think, to get a week's pay to people uh, who work in restaurants that, uh, that don't have income right now. And uh, it matters that in this moment that the church stands up tall, that the church is the church. And if, the, if we ever meant anything to our community, our community needs us right now. And so again, this is an option. You know, I've been thinking lately because I've had to readjust my attitude, uh, just to be honest with you, through the whole thing. And uh, praise God. Uh, but I remember something John Maxwell said. He said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so this is an opportunity to demonstrate from our church, from the body of Christ, that we care. I don't care if they're saved or unsaved. Uh, God loves them, and it's our job to take care of them in Jesus' name. And so you can text to help uh, during this event, any dollar amount to the keyword help, and uh, all of that money, I'm not gonna distribute the funds, I'll set a team up and uh, People can apply, and if it's legit, uh, we're going to do what we can to give them a week's pay. And I'd love to see five to $10,000 raised. So again, take part, share this, invite all your friends on your social media feeds, text people that are struggling, and we're going to have a great, great time. So again, we're believing for people to be saved. You know, this is their opportunity. Uh, maybe they're not going to church anywhere, but uh, they are had their eyes open, you know, about all that's going on in the world. And uh, maybe they'd like to ask a preacher a question. And so, or to have a preacher pray for them. And so Kamala and I are gonna do that, amen. Okay, so enough of that. Uh, also, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, we, I, I prefer to call it. We are gonna have a drive up service. Uh, so we're believing for great weather, no rain uh, on Sunday morning. Let's pack out our parking lot and let's celebrate the risen Savior at 1030 like we have been the last two Sundays. Uh, one special thing we're going to do is my staff is preparing a special gift for every family. And so we're preparing, uh, for the lack of a better term, an Easter box. And in the Easter box, we're going to fill it with 
uh, scripture cards and prayer cards and communion elements so that in an upcoming service we can have communion together. Uh, there's going to be, if you have, uh, if you are a family with kids, there's going to be craft items for your kids who are uh, stuck at home. Uh, for our elderly, we're going to have puzzles and different things. To We just want to be a blessing. Uh, we know that you're spending a lot of time at home. And uh, so every family that comes, you're going to get this special Easter box. And we may turn this into another outreach to apartment complexes and shut-ins and different places uh, going forward. So uh, be praying for our Resurrection Sunday. It's going to be different. Uh, praise God. But listen, this is going to remind us. And I, I think it's a good thing. I wish we were together in the sanctuary. But you know what? This Easter, it's not about a bunny rabbit. It's not about pretty dresses. It, it's not about Easter egg hunts and candy. It's about Jesus. And uh, I, I do thank God for stripping all of this junk that we have added onto our faith uh, off of us. And so let's just pray. Pray for me. I'm praying for you. And let's just experience the power of God at a wonderful drive-up church on Sunday morning uh, at 1030. Had a testimony I wanted to share with you. Um, we had, I had Miss Stacy uh, Harris, of course, as our director of our new Harvest Kids Christian Daycare. And I do so appreciate the Lord's timing. We've been pressing, as is right to do, uh, to get our license. And uh, things seem to be delayed. And then this event with the coronavirus broke out. And I'm so glad that we didn't open up the daycare, hire 10, 12 people, have 40, 50 kids, only to have to turn everybody back out and lay off employees. And so God's timing is perfect. Uh, but I had had uh, Miss Stacy check with the state regulators because we had had our inspection, but we'd never heard back. And then of course, non-essential state workers are out of the office. And so they did contact us and said uh, that nothing is happening, uh, no activity with daycares, and that when the declaration of emergency is lifted, we would be contacted. And that was the last word. But we've been standing on the favor of God. We have favor. And we designed an angel to escort our application uh, through. Well, we got an email day before yesterday saying that we have been deemed our daycare to have, based on the inspection, no deficiencies. And so it was a huge hurdle uh, that we knew we were going to overcome, but we thought we were going to have to wait. And now we, we are just awaiting the official letter for our license to arrive in the, in the mail any day. And so praise God for the favor of God uh, manifest for our daycare. And so we are still preparing. We are still planning. Our daycare is still coming. And uh, I just wanted to share that uh, testimony with you. So Stacy and the staff, uh, they are working diligently to make sure that as soon as this lockdown is lifted, that we can open up our daycare uh, and begin to watch kids in just a matter of days, I hope, uh, from that lockdown being open. So I just wanted to thank, thank you, Sister Stacy, uh, Melissa. Uh, praise God has been such a, just working as a volunteer to help us. My daughter, Faith, my, my wife, Amber, uh, has put so much work into the administrative aspect, the accounting aspect of this project. And anyway, I want to thank everybody who's, who's worked and labored, volunteered and paid staff, to help us get to this point. So anyway, great, great things are happening. Praise God. So anyway, say amen, shout hallelujah. Uh, praise God over that. So let's go ahead and let's get ready to take a moment and worship God with our tithes and offerings. And uh, I wanted to invite you to turn in your Bible to 2 Chronicles 26. 2 Chronicles 26. And we're going to read verses 3 through 5. Amen. 2 Chronicles chapter 26, and we're going to read verses 3 uh, through 5. And I have it already printed out here uh, in my notes. Praise God. And uh, hallelujah. So if you're on our social media side or even our YouTube side, then you can make a comment. Uh, let us know. Let the pastor know you're watching. Let us know how you're doing. Uh, uh, share with us any breakthroughs if you can. Private messages, any testimonies. Uh, we want to hear that. It encourages us. And uh, so thank God for doing that. Okay, 2 Chronicles 26, verses 3, 4, and 5. It says, 
16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, reign as king. And he reigned 50 and two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was also uh, Jecoliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah. I want you to mark that. He sought God in the days of Zechariah the prophet, who had understanding in the visions of God. Now here's the phrase I want to center up on. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. God made him to prosper. Let me read uh, verse 5 to you from the Amplified Translation. It says, He set himself to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the things of God. And as long as he sought, inquired of, yearned for the Lord, God made him prosper. The New Living Translation says, As long as he sought guidance from the Lord, God gave him success. God gave him success. Second Chronicles 26, 5 from the God's Word Translation, I like it too. It says, excuse me, <clears throat> get a drink. So we're looking at 2 Chronicles 26, 5. 2 Chronicles 26, 5 from the God's Word translation says he dedicated his life to serving God in the days of Zechariah, who taught him to fear God. As long as he dedicated his life to the serving of the Lord, the Lord gave him success. And so I know that for many of you, this verse is familiar. Uh, but praise God, you know, I want to take us back to uh, that as a believer, our supply, our prosperity, our being taken care of is not dependent upon the nation we live and how the nation in which we live is doing. It's not dependent on the government. Of course, naturally, it just depends on how dependent, how intertwined we've allowed our lives to become with the world system. Um, that we become affected when the world system is affected. But it, isn't it wonderful that our prosperity, our supply, our lives being funded, our businesses being sustained, our families being funded and taken care of is not dependent on anything other than you, my connection with the Lord what I do with God, my pursuit of my relationship uh, with God. Remember, again, as we've said in recent services, God showed himself more than capable of watering, feeding, sheltering, and protecting over a million people in the desert. Hallelujah. Talking about the children of Israel in the wilderness. But we who want to experience unbroken supply, uninterrupted provision. I, that's what I'm after. I, I want to prosper in every season, no matter what's going on. Well, I know you're like that too. Well, the Bible gives us in all kinds of ways the keys to prosperity. And I'm just pulling this one out of 2 Chronicles 26. Here is a man, he's only 16 years old. I want you to think about this. Uh, you know, this, this is a huge key for prosperity. Here you've got a young man, he's just 16 years old when he comes to reign. So now he's, he's ruling as a teenager in Jerusalem, a kingdom, uh, in a midst where there's constant threats and coups and people scheming, con conniving to get in. And then just all the natural affairs and responsibilities of the, the daily task of running a kingdom, uh, all of that responsibility. And then if you read the context of this chapter, he's got the Philistines, he's got enemies, he's got wars to fight. Oh my goodness. So notice as a young man, no doubt he, he knows he doesn't have what he needs. He doesn't have the maturity. He doesn't have the wisdom. He doesn't have the, the, the blessings that experience and time give to a person just by living and experiencing things. So, you know, he, he knew he needed God, and so he set himself to seek God. He sought God 
And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Think about that phrase, God made him. Uh, thinking about this earlier, I, I thought of it this way. It means God saw to it. God saw to it. In other words, God from his high place of dominion and power and authority, he made sure that Uzziah prospered. He made sure that Uzziah had and enjoyed success. Now that's what you want, isn't that right? That's what I want. I want God seeing to it, making sure, uh, making me to prosper financially, materially, and in every way. But you, you see it, right? They had, Uzziah had his part to play. So what part was that to play? Well, he had to constantly seek God. The God's Word translation says, or excuse me, uh, the, 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 oh, the Amplified translation says that as long as he sought guidance from God. You know, a, a big reason why people, Christians, don't prosper is they just act. They just do things. They make decisions and plans. And then retroactively, they ask God to bless their plan. They ask God to prosper their decision. And uh, it never works out like it, it should work out, like you want it to work out. God's greatest blessing is always going to be on his plan. So this was a key uh, for Uzziah's prosperity. He saw it and inquired, God, what do you want me to do about this? What decision should I make? Uh, he, he sought God's wisdom his help, his aid, his direction for every decision, whether it's going to war with the Philistines, whether it's the administration of his kingdom, whatever it was, Uzziah turned to God and sought God. Now, if you know anything about Uzziah, notice it says, as long as he did that, as long as he dedicated his life to serving God and putting God first, God made him to prosper. But do you know, the Bible records later on that there was a period in Uzziah's life where he stopped. He thought he had this figured out now, and he stopped inquiring of the Lord. He stopped seeking God. He, he stopped going to God in prayer and waiting on God to get God's guidance and wisdom and counsel and instruction. You know what happened when he stopped doing that? Well, that was the end of his prosperity. Uh, he stopped prospering. He, you know, So what you have done in the past in seeking God, in hearing from God, getting the wisdom and instruction from God about your life, the course of your life, your finances. Uh, in, you know, in every area, as long as you're doing that, God's going to see to it that you prosper. And so I just encourage you, believer, don't stop seeking God. Don't stop yearning for Him. Don't stop because you and I and our, our habit and our church fellowship has been interrupted for a short season. You know, don't stop cultivating your relationship with God. Press in even more. Uh, don't stop seeking God's guidance. Uh, do it even more. And as long as you dedicate your life and you have your priorities fixed, God is first. His word is first. His way is first. His will is first. Then listen, God's going to see to it, no matter what's going on in this world, that you are healthy, that you're protected, that you win your battles, that you win your wars. Uh, amen. And that your life is provided for and fully funded. Amen. It reminds me a lot of seek first the kingdom of God uh, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to us besides. So see, as long as we have God first place and we are seeking God first, then he sees to it that everything the world is out chasing and seeking, he adds to us. He adds homes and cars and clothes and fuel and food and gas and good things as long as we put God first. And so we want to give you a definite moment right now to take out your phone if you want to utilize text to give uh, every week's become more and more popular since we've introduced it. Text to give. That number should be on your screen. Uh, the phone number is 270-279-1777. And then you text WHC, I believe, for your tithe and general offering. 
Uh, if you're a partner with Chris Cody Ministries, you would text a separate text. And the keyword would be CCM. And uh, I just got dates for our trip back to Mexico in August. We are going to get back to normal. Uh, praise God. So Chris Cody Ministries and all the activity will resume. And so I so appreciate your partner gifts. And I've been praying over those. Uh, amen. And uh, so, or you could use the church app, your normal way of giving. Uh, write that check right now. Put it in an envelope. Send it 3250 Steel Road, West Paducah, Kentucky, 42086. You have been so faithful for three weeks. God has been so faithful. And uh, I just want to thank you again. Uh, just a quick, quick testimony, and we're going to get into the Word for a moment. I had uh, someone uh, uh, give me an envelope, and uh, they left it on the dash of my car. And uh, I opened the envelope, and there was a, an offering in there for me, for my wife and I. So grateful for that. But anyway, as, as his spiritual father, you know, God had put it on their heart to sow this seed. And it was a seed in a time of lack and famine. And in the card, they had written, Pastor, please agree with us. We are believing for a major turnaround. Well, that was last week sometime. Well, I just spoke to this person on the phone a couple of days ago. And uh, I asked how they were doing. And uh, praise God and let him know that I was believing with them. And he said, well, you know, Pastor, we're thrilled to report. You know, we were a few thousand dollars behind because of delays in our meetings and, you know, just different things and you know, employment, different things going on. But we were, we sowed that seed and we were seeking God for breakthrough. He said, Pastor, I got a phone call. And uh, as I talked to the man on the phone call, he said, how are you doing financially? And uh, so he said, I just had it on my heart. My, my wife gave me a number. We were several thousand dollars behind. And the man said, the check is in the mail. Praise God. And so I'm just telling you, see, as this person I'm talking to, he, he sowed his seed. He continued to seek God, trust in God. God moved upon someone who had the money. And all of their bills are caught up in their current, and their, 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 God saw to it. See, God saw to it. God made him to prosper. And it's just such a wonderful testimony. And uh, let me pray with you right now. Father, God, as I'm releasing my family, our tithes and our offerings, praise God to the house of God. And as we are collectively as a church family, as we're sowing our seed, oh, Father God, I thank you for the anointing that breaks the yoke of lack. Father God, as my wife said in a recent uh, video, God, we are living uh, on our harvest right now in this season. And we are so glad we sowed in days gone by. But we're sowing today because we never want to encounter a future out there where we have not sown seed and have a harvest to reap from. And so, Father, I thank you that as we continue to put you first and to be doers of the word no matter what's going on in the world, glory to God no matter how much pressure we may be facing, God, that as we seek you, you are seen to it and making sure that we prosper and that we succeed. And so we're in faith together that God, for the next seven days, the next week ahead, we call it, we say we are fully funded and we are not troubled. Why don't you say that out loud? Say, I am fully funded and I am not troubled. Amen. Praise God. My, my spiritual father used to say that, Dr. Dufresne. He would walk around and say, I'm fully funded and I am not troubled. Praise God and uh, amen. So, hallelujah. Praise God for that. Well, let's just get into the word for a little while. Amen. Uh, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I thank you. I thank you for leading me. I thank you for guiding me. I thank you for leading me. I thank you for guiding me. I thank you for leading me. I thank you for guiding me. I thank you, Father, that the gifts of the Spirit uh, can and are being made manifest. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, Father God, I thank you. I thank you for the unction and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. What is that Holy Spirit? Why don't you just take a moment where you are praying the Holy Ghost. Wait with me for just a minute. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. <clears throat> yeah, now someone out there, you're gripped by fear. 
and you've been having panic attacks since this has started. I take authority over that spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. And I take authority over those panic attacks. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. I bind your power. I bind the spirit of fear. And I command that operation against this person to cease and to desist. In the name of Jesus, you loose them and you let them go. And Father, I thank you for your power. I thank you for your peace that liberates them and sets them free. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And I just say you'll not, you'll not have another uh, you'll you'll not have another panic attack. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, let's go over to Romans chapter 1. Why don't we do that? Praise God. Romans chapter 1. I tell you I'm excited. I I I I'm, I'm not enjoying, you know, the interruption, the lockdown, all the things that's going on out there, but I believe I know God is on the march. God is on the move. And uh, praise God, like the prophecy I shared with you uh, from David Wilkerson back from 1986, that there would come a plague upon America and it would hit New York City harder than it's ever been hit or shaken. Uh, and that out of it, it is said that bars, churches, governments would be shut down. That's all come to pass. Uh, but out of it, ultimately, uh, repentance would be the cry. Uh, from pulpits across the land, from the man of God in the pulpit, and that out of it would come a third great uh, awakening to America and to the world. And you know, I'm just so excited. I know we're living in the last days, but all that the prophets have said must come to pass before the, the end of the age. And so that means there must be a great harvest of souls before the Lord comes. And that's where we are right now, Matthew 24, around verse 14. And this gospel shall be preached, amen, unto the ends of the world, and then the end uh, will come unto the end of the age. And uh, so praise God. I'm so excited about all that God is doing. You know, if you recall, uh, just a few weeks before this event uh, with the virus and all that our country has endured and is enduring broke out on the scene, we were having a Wednesday night service, and I was I had been teaching on revival, this end time move of God, different elements about it. I'd been talking about repentance, if you will. But the Lord just arrested me right before I came after praise and worship to take the service. And he said, very strong and authoritative in my heart, I want you to get up tonight and start a series on the subject of faith. I want you to get up and teach the people how you have learned, you and your wife, to live by faith. And I, I have no doubt that that instruction came to me for us because God knew this moment was coming. And he knew that we were gonna enter a moment where we needed, praise God, to be strong in faith. And so we just, we got up, I got up by faith, didn't have any notes on it that night, and began to instruct us uh, praise God along the lines of faith. And so I wanted to continue that. That's, the, that's really in terms of direction for preaching. I've been saying some things that I've had on my heart in recent services about how to pray, how to intercede, all that we're facing, different things, about how to live free from fear on Sunday. But I felt uh, stirred in my heart to go back. What was the last thing God said to us before we entered into this season? He instructed me in that Wednesday night, and that's what we're in now, is to teach on the subject of faith and to share from my heart and my life how I have learned, my wife and I, how God taught us to live by faith. And so for a few minutes, uh, let's do that together. Praise God. So here in Romans uh, chapter number one, uh, verse number 17, I want you to notice this with me. It says, for therein is the righteous, well, let me back up. Let's back up to the 16th verse. Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also uh, to the Greek. Praise God. And so I know it's a little bit of a different moment. I've got my computer here, uh, I think, and I'm pretty sure I know. But I am going to look up Romans chapter 1 on my Bible program. And uh, let me get over to a King James Version so I can get this Greek word. 
And let's pull this up. Let's look at this. Romans 1, verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, of the anointed one and his anointing, the message that pertains to him. And if you remember the first message he preached, the first message he instructed his disciples to preach was repent and believe the gospel. Repent for the kingdom of God has come unto us. And I tell you what, that's what we need to be proclaiming to everyone who's not walking with God, got away from God, left God, left the church, or who has never uh, received Jesus yet. We need to go back to the simple message of repent and believe the gospel. For Paul went on and said, for it, the gospel, this message is the power of God unto salvation. So that's the word. We're going to look up the word salvation here. Oh boy. Salvation. I'm going to pull it up. If I double click on it. Okay. Praise God. It is the Greek word like I thought. Well, like I thought, soteria. And this is what it means. It means a rescue. It means safety. It means to be rescued and to experience safety physically or morally. It means deliverance, health, salvation, saving, uh, or to save. Glory to God. Let's look at it in the Vines, uh, Dr. Vines definition. Praise the Lord. I like this. It means to be delivered from danger and apprehension. It could be national deliverance or salvation on a national level. See, our nation needs to be saved right now. Amen. Well, what will save our nation? The power of God. What is the power of God? The gospel. Amen. The message of the gospel, of the good news of Jesus, what he did, what we're going to talk about Good Friday, what we're going to celebrate uh, on Sunday morning, that uh, Jesus paid the price. Amen. He took upon himself our sin. He took upon himself sickness, disease, failure, poverty, torment, all that is death and all that is the curse upon himself as our substitute. See, he's done this. So the uh, our nation can be saved by believing the gospel. Praise God. So I like this word. And it, it, you know, it goes all the way down to the individual level. This word saved doesn't just mean to get saved and go to heaven. I'm reading to you from these Greek scholars and how they define this Greek word soteria. It means to be delivered from danger and apprehension. It, it is national. It's personal. It means to be preserved safe. It means to be healthy. Glory to God. It means to be spiritually saved or, or to come into salvation, to be born again. It means to be delivered from bondage. Uh, this word means peace. It means harmony. It means prosperity. It means to be rescued. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that's just wonderful. So, but again, notice it is the power of God unto salvation and all that we just talked about, what that word means, to everyone that believes. To everyone that believes. So, you know, that tells me, friend, you know, it's, it's totally on us. And, of course, there's millions upon millions of people who would believe, but they don't know. And that is why we have to be active. We have to tell them the good news. We, it's through the, power, the, through the message that God's power is released to rescue people from drugs and alcohol, to rescue people from the coronavirus, to rescue people from the fear of the coronavirus. Uh, amen. To keep people in a place of safety and soundness and peace and health. That is to everyone that believes. Now you could just as easily uh, exchange the word believe for faith. So really that's what Paul is saying. This power accomplishes this salvation, this holistic salvation for everyone that has faith in it. Now go to verse 17. For herein or therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And so, 
you know, uh, again, I want to rehearse this to you. Off and on throughout my ministry career, if you will, uh, I have heard these words come out of my mouth. Uh, if you can't pay your bills by faith, you're behind. If you can't fill your cupboards by faith with food, you're behind. If you can't fill your gas tank with faith, you're behind. And, uh, you know, when you come into a moment like this, uh, it's a perfect illustration of what God has been endeavoring to get us ready for. Uh, you know, one of my good friends uh, made this statement. He was praying and fellowshipping with the Lord, and he related this, that God had asked him a question. And the question was, Son, uh, why don't more of my people live by faith? Why don't they? This says we are to live by faith. If we're the just, if we're born again, we're to live by faith. But you know, most people don't. And so the question to my friend from God in, their, in this fellowship time they were having together was, son, why is it that more of my children don't live by faith? And, uh, you know, wise, my friend said, well, I don't know, Lord, why don't you tell me? And the Lord's answer to him was, because they don't have to. They don't have to. He knew what he meant, and you probably do too. You knew what God meant. See, you know, for so long, in our country, uh, you have people don't, Christians, they don't, in America, they don't have to live by faith. They've got a good job that has decent benefits. They have credit cards. They have easy access to money through credit. They have banks. They have pharmacies. They have doctors. They have health insurance. They have security systems and cameras and armed guards and weapons. And, and so uh, he said, the reason more of my children don't live by faith is because they don't have to. Well, this is a sobering and, and we need to be thankful for the moment that we've come into this moment of shaking because it ought to, if you're paying attention, awaken your senses spiritually and emotionally and mentally to how easily all of those earthly, fleshly crutches can be kicked out from underneath you and instantly taken away from you. And if you've been leaning, if we've been leaning on, trusting in doctors, medicine, nutrition, vitamins, health insurance, our credit score, our, our big credit balance that we have available, uh, you know, this kind of stuff. And we haven't been cultivating actively our faith in God so that, you know what, even though I have these things that I could use, I'm not going to lean on them. I'm going to use my faith to get healed. I'm going to use my faith for supply. I'm going to develop my faith. Amen. And uh, so many have it. And so, I, now notice I said, I didn't say there, you know, if you, if you can't feel you're covered by faith, what did I say? I said, you're behind uh, I didn't say you're hopeless. I, I didn't say you're condemned. I, I didn't say that there's, there's no hope for you. I just said you're behind. But you know, I have found, can I just tell on myself, I have, I have found of myself in many occasions, I'm sad to tell you, I, I woke up and realized I'm behind, that I was behind in my faith. Uh, I've had God tell me, son, you're behind in your confession. You know, you confessed it for a while, but uh, then you backed off and you got interested or distracted with other things. He, and he wasn't mad at me, but he was saying, you need to go back and cultivate uh, that confession of faith uh, in that area that I had slipped in, whether it was releasing the angels to help me uh, or whether it was talking life and health over my body or whether it was talking supply. You know, if here, here's one thing to just use as a measuring tool. If... Uh, if some aspect of your life starts to dry up on the vine, you ought to ask yourself, am I on the cutting edge of my faith in that area? You know, it's as we homeschool around here, we use pencils a lot and uh, teaching the kids. And, uh, you know, you get a nice sharp pencil, but you go to using that, right? You use it. And you use that pencil very long, it becomes dull. And you wore that, wear it all the way down to the nub, not wanting to go back and sharpen the pencil, but then you're really in a bad way. So your faith is in the same way. You know, you get your faith positioned, you get your faith all sharpened, and then you use your faith. And it, But as you're using that, you're expending the, like the lead in the pencil, and it becomes necessary 
to go back and to sharpen your pencil. Uh, we want to be on the cutting edge of our faith in every key area. So what would some of those areas be? Well, obviously, we want to be very skilled and, you know, more, more developed in our faith for finances and supply than we've ever been. You know, we want to become skillful. And I just encourage you, pick it up today. I'll give you some tips and some keys. What can I do today, Pastor, to become more skillful in my faith in God for finances? Well, there's things you can do. What about you need to be on the cutting edge of your faith, developing a wonderful measure of faith for divine protection? Amen. Uh, another key area is in tapping into the assistance of the angels. Uh, praise God. Another one is uh, for your body, how to receive health. Uh, faith to hear from God. Faith to stay in peace. You know, so some of the, those are just some of the core, you know, every day of my life I want to I have provision. Every day of my life I need provision. Every day of my life I want protection. You know, I want protection from crime, from disasters, from weather, from storms, from calamities, from evil and wicked men. Uh, I, I, you want that too, right? So, But we've got to have faith in it. The just shall live by faith. And then healing. Oh, my goodness. You know, uh, every day you ought to be reading in the scriptures and good books and materials a little something every day on the subject of faith or healing. Now, why would that be? Because every day of your life, either you or someone you meet or know is going to need it. Amen. And uh, so again, when I said that we're behind, we, many Christians have entered into this season behind in their faith. Well, listen, you just need to pick up because uh, uh, God has, it, when I've fallen behind, God is so gracious, so merciful, so kind. He can help you catch up. We're living in a day of acceleration. Uh, things are being accelerated. The world is accelerating in time towards judgment. The church is accelerating in time towards this last day move of God and the catching away of the church. And But see, as these things happen, for those of us that love God, fear God, pursue God, want God, though we find ourselves behind, He will accelerate, I have no doubt, our development if we will begin to pick up and do what we need to do, uh, amen, to become skillful with our faith. Amen. So real quick, let's go over to Psalm 34. We're going to go to Psalm 34. Hallelujah. Psalm 34. What a wonderful psalm. I've been spending some extra time in the Psalms because, uh, you know, when you're going through a challenging, pressure-filled, calamitous kind of a time, and of course we're very blessed, but, you know, we're in the midst of the world and we see everything happening just like you do. So many of the Psalms uh, are Spirit-inspired prayers or moments with God, the Spirit of prophecy where David was going through a hard time, someone was going through a hard time. And, uh, but they're filled with such encouragement and strength. And so I encourage you to spend some extra time uh, in the Psalms. Okay, here we go. Psalm 34. Get another drink before I read this verse. Psalm 34. <clears throat> let's read verse 17. Let's begin there. Well, let's read verses... Uh, 15, let's start there. My goodness, it's just so good. Where do you start? The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hears. Oh, come on. Don't you like that? The righteous cry and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Praise God. The Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart uh, and saves such as be of a contrite spirit. 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Uh, I looked that up recently. It means to be condemned. So there's a lot we could talk about. I'm going to try to keep it in the vein of faith. Uh, but do you know, as we live in these last days, uh, we're going to see judgments uh, poured out on those that hate the righteous. Look at what this verse said. Uh, praise God. Verse 21. Evil will slay the wicked. You know, lack is evil. And, uh, but if, if, if people don't get right, and they continue to hate what God calls right. And people, the righteous, that are, are right with God through the new birth, if they continue it, they shall be condemned. They shall be judged. Uh, praise God. Over in Thessalonians, it says, it is a righteous thing for the Lord to trouble them with trouble who trouble you. We don't want that for any person. Uh, if you've hated the righteous, if you've been in opposition to God, we just simply want to tell you God loves you. He's already sent His Son to die for you and to forgive you of your sin. But you need to repent. You need to repent. You need to come to God. You need to confess your sin and receive Jesus and be born again. Then come into the family of God. But uh, disease. Disease is evil according to, uh, I think it's Deuteronomy 7.15. Uh, the law of Moses calls disease evil. This coronavirus is evil. And uh, praise God. Now I know that, you know, uh, I know of Christians that have been sick. Uh, I'm not saying that if any, everybody that's got the coronavirus is, is evil. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that there's this principle in here uh, that uh, evil's going to come to the wicked. Of course, that's not, that's not you and me. But let's go back up to verse 19. It says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him or her out of them all. Hallelujah. And so I, I can here to tell you uh, and can tell you confidently all of the troubles, all of the trials, all the afflictions, all of the tests, all of the pressures that I've experienced, the things that have come against me, demons, circumstances, disloyal, unfaithful people, people of, uh, you know, lack of integrity, whatever. <laughs> uh, in my 25 plus years of serving God, God has delivered me from each one of those. And this affliction, this time of trouble and testing we find ourselves in, you know what God's going to do? He's going to deliver us from them all. Amen. And uh, praise God. So, you know, one of the things that we need to be doing with our faith is resisting the devil. In uh, 1 Peter 5, 8, we are instructed by Peter, where you could say the Holy Ghost on Peter, to resist the devil. Peter reminds us that we have an adversary and we have to be on guard against that adversary. In verse 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Now notice this, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now you watch around, you know, I've always been, I think it was my daddy that got me into this. My mom would go shopping and we'd get bored and we'd sit in the concourse of the mall and we, my dad and I, we would just watch people. Humans are funny creatures. And but I think I just got into that habit. I'm just kind of a student of humanity and you watch There'll be Christians who are overcome during this crisis. And it's not because God's not endeavoring to be as good to them as he is any other believer, but because they don't know what they need to know in this moment about faith, uh, then they are going to be one that to a degree the enemy is able to devour. Now, if the devil couldn't devour our adversary, walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, if some of the prey the enemy could devour, if, if it wasn't possible to be devoured because we're born again, just because we're Christians, that doesn't make us immune to being devoured by the enemy. Again, who's Peter writing this statement to? 
He's writing this statement to Christians. He's telling believers, spirit-filled believers, be sober, pay attention, be watchful. I know I'm adding those, my, those are my words, but uh, they fit the meaning. The, uh, turn, oh, there's my scripture over here. Again, I have a new Bible here. So he says, be sober, and he says, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour, resist him steadfast in the faith. So see, it's, it's implied that if we don't, if we're not sober, uh, if we're not vigilant, uh, praise God, if we're not steadfast in our use of faith against the enemy, against the devil, that we could be devoured. And we don't want that to happen. Uh, but praise God, friend, your faith, your faith uh, has what it takes to repel the enemy from being able to devour your health, your peace, your joy, your business, your ministry, uh, praise God, your family, uh, your finances. Go over with me to Ephesians chapter 6. Now, I felt a sneeze coming on. If I were to sneeze, you know, there's pollen in the air out there and the farmers are at work. So don't think that, uh, praise the Lord, that uh, something's wrong with me if I end up sneezing here. Anyway, praise God. What's Rick say? Look up at the light. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Not going to go too much longer. Take heart. Praise God. I just want to encourage you about your faith. Amen. You know, uh, if I can just tell you that, um, you know, Amber and I, not today, perfect in our faith. Well, we've stumbled. Uh, I have stumbled into unbelief. I have stumbled at fear. I have stumbled at the promise of God through unbelief. Like, you know, Abraham didn't. Um, so not perfect in faith, but how, how have I learned to live by faith? Well, I just walked in the fullness of what I knew. And God's mercy got me through. But as I've learned, as I've studied, as I've, I've practiced, you know, something would come along and I'd say, hmm, okay, here's a good opportunity to trust God. And so I did. And uh, praise God, or I applied a sermon that I heard or some principles of faith I, I got from God's word or especially from the teaching and instruction and life example of my spiritual parents as you put your faith into practice, come on, uh, you will develop skillfulness with your faith. Uh, you know, my, my wife's been out uh, getting the garden ready and, and she, she got on the, some equipment today that she normally doesn't, doesn't use. And you know, if it was Rex or myself, we just jump on. We've done it so much. We could just do these things without thinking. But you know, for my wife to jump on the equipment the rototiller, the mower, all that we're using right now. Well, she's, you know, in the beginning, more tentative. She accomplished it. But how many of you know, the more she uses that equipment, the more skillful she'll become. So you just need to pick up where you are and believe God. And let's just say you have a job that's meeting all of your basic needs. Well, see, how do you stay out of that category of not living by faith because you don't have to? Well, you need to believe God for more than what you make. You need to use your faith to believe for money and resources beyond what your paycheck could allow you so that you can take that as an opportunity to tap into divine supply and use your faith. Amen. Same thing with healing. You need to meditate in those scriptures about your body, about healing, about the different methods that God brings healing to our life. And when symptoms come, listen, instead of just first instinctually running to the uh, pharmacy cabinet and, you know, to the medicine cabinet, go to those scriptures. Say, hey, I'm not dying here. These symptoms are not fun, but here's an opportunity for me to rely on, use my faith in God's word to get these symptoms off of me instead of just running to the pharmaceutical deal. Amen? And so that's what I'm talking about. But we were talking about... Uh, Psalm 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous. We're not immune from coming into seasons of trouble, test, trial, and pressure. But we have the promise, he delivers us out of them all. How's he gonna do it? He's gonna do it 
through his power, his grace, his love, his mercy, his wisdom, as we use our faith. We saw from 1 Peter chapter 5 that we have to live our life sober. Uh, it, it doesn't, that's, that's not a word, it includes that, but it, it's not talking about, uh, you know, not, not getting drunk on alcohol. Obviously, there's other scriptures say we shouldn't do that. Uh, sober here means watchful, serious, paying attention. And then Peter used the word vigilant and steadfast, resisting the devil who's coming against us with our faith. Well, now we're in Ephesians 6, and we want to show you something else about our faith. So praise God. Verse 12, Ephesians 6 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, amen. And uh, praise God. Goes on, talks about all the armor of God. Here's verse 16, what I wanted you to see. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you are able to quench all the, notice the word all, all the fiery darts of the wicked. Hallelujah. Friends, your faith is so vitally important in every moment, in every season, but in this season especially. So I want to leave you with just a couple of quick words of instruction about what could you do. Well, number one, you need to feed your faith. And the Word of God is faith food. That's where faith comes from. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So every one of these areas that are so critical to your life, Provision, protection, healing, health, strength, leading, all of those things, the angels. You need to feed your faith, praise God, uh, scriptures that talk about those provisions every single day. You need to confess them, okay? That's just such a huge thing. We don't have time tonight to go forward with that, but you must put the Word of God in your mouth. You need to get up every day and say, thank God I am not troubled and I am fully funded. You need to say, I'm kept by the power of God, that he delivers me out of every evil work, that no plague shall come nigh my dwelling, but only with my eye will I see and behold the reward of the wicked, that the power of God is at work within me to keep my body from all sickness and all disease. It's all in the word, amen? But then finally, take every opportunity that comes along and if not, if you don't see one, circumstances will come along and give you plenty of opportunities, but you create one. Believe God for something more than what your job could pay you. Use your faith for finances. Use your faith for sowing. Use your faith for reaping. Use your faith uh, in protection. Use your faith in the Word of God on healing instead of running to the... Now again, if you need medicine, take it. If you need the doctor, go. But I'm just saying, you know, if you're not dying, if it's manageable, take that as an opportunity to use your faith. And the more answers to prayer you see, the more confident you become, the more daily you make the practice of your faith, the more skillful you will be at it. And when you enter into the next season of testing that we're going to face as last day believers, you will be more prepared then for this one that we entered into. Amen. World Harvest Church, friend of the ministry, we love you so very much. We're praying for you every day. God is at work. And I just, I'm just believing that we're going to more appreciate getting to fellowship than we ever have before when this is over. Uh, that we'll have a greater desire to press in and to be a vital part. You know, it just makes me sad a little bit. We Right now, we don't have an opportunity to come and serve in the house of God. But you can serve your family. You can serve your neighbor. You can serve your co-worker. Serve an elderly person, a frontline worker. And be the church in a big way. Don't forget to take part with us in our live Good Friday celebration broadcast right here on these platforms, Friday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, praise God. But until then, if you need me, I'm a phone call, an email, a text message away. 
But Amber and I, we love you. God bless you. And we'll see you really soon. Bye-bye.